been a long time. I should have left you. What's going on, everyone? My name is MG The Future. Thank you for joining me on this lovely Monday on my YouTube channel. Today, I will be talking a, a little bit about Instacords, a little bit about Scalar, and I'll be using Easy Keys together. This particular video is a request. <laughs> I did quite a few different kinds of videos about these different tools in different contexts, but I was looking at the language on the comments for the Instacord video. Since this particular video has been very lit for me, a lot of the comments and feedback have kind of been from people who really want to get the most out of it. And they found me because they got it. So they expect and or would appreciate more. And I'm more than willing to do so because it is an interesting plugin and I find it a lot of fun to help me sort through all this. I kind of word clouded it, kind of see what was coming on or to see what was going on. And it looks like a mixed bag of things. There's a lot of needs. It's a guitar plugin, <laughs> uh, t time tools. It's a uh, the week I'm going to ignore because I know what that's from and now and host some get rid of. People are saying open and just make music. Um, think great. A preferences button, whatever that is. Maybe we need to explore preferences, which probably the presets, right? And then play chords. Uh, really learn better or better learning or learn the instrument, learn or know artists. So basically, a lot of the language is coming from people in MIDI production. It's a lot of people learning and wanting to know more and want to be more creative and want to produce more art. So with that, I want to conduct this tutorial in that way. So nothing serious. <laughs> so first things first, we got Scalar. I did the Scalar update. I made a comment on my Twitter account saying, yo, I'm bugging out. I can't find my Twitter scales, <laughs> my Twitter scales, <laughs> my Scalar scales, because all of this was missing when I did the update. So now I got all those scales. And what's that cool is for is not just for you to pick it and find out what chord progression is going. What's this really dope for is when you analyze, let's say, Stevie Wonder chord. You might find that he was using some kind of harmonic gypsy minor third flatted fifth type scale. And you'd be like, oh, now it all makes sense. It's the one, the four and the five and that thing. So I appreciate that they're expanding that. They also expanded the artists, if I am not mistaken. So there's going to be some cool starting points for you guys. And they are, did expand the songs, J-pop and K-pop. I know my homie, uh, Cheddar Meister, he's going to appreciate that because that's one of the things he loves to create. This love ballad in this sad ending low key got bridges in it, but I'm not going to tell you all about that. But it's a really cool update to make sure you get it right. What I had to do is go to help and go to the scalar forum. And a lot of people were saying, yo, the presets and the scales weren't showing up like it didn't for me. And then at the bottom of that thread, there's a Amazon server a link to the Mac version. I re downloaded it, erased all the old VST and component files, reinstalled it, and then everything showed up as expected. Another thing that I touched on probably a week or two ago, saying, yo, it'd be dope if this had folder recognition. And it does. So my test sets are now in a folder. And what I'm using right now is out. You can make folders as you name the file with a forward slash. It, it gives you the instructions in the manual. So it's really lit. Or you can go directly to that folder by open folder and reorganize everything there. So everything's clean. Um, it detects when you move things around. I love it. It's better to organize. So basically how I would use Scalar in that context is a person like me, I, I buy a lot of kits. So a lot of times there's MIDI loops included if you find the good ones. So I analyze those, save them as Scalar. Um, if I'm working with Ableton or Melodyne to convert audio to MIDI, like little two four bar loops, I'll convert it, analyze it with this, create the port chord progression out of whole chords, save it. And then when I go further on in this process and procedure, you'll notice I'm using easy keys a lot. So it's cool to be able to start with Scalar, pick something that we like. In this example, I'm probably gonna do jazz, pick a random jazz thing, or if it was something I had, something from here, and put some chords together. So that's how I work with it. If they analyze this up top, I drag what I want to the bottom and then you can save as chord set. Then in my workflow that I'm working on, I drag that into MIDI, uh, easy keys. Salute to everybody on my last video who's like, yo, change your preferences so both plugins to stay open. I noticed that now that they're both open, the drag and drop works flawlessly. I don't have any problems with this particular step in my workflow. Next thing I need to do, they did give us more banks, which is lit because now we can write B sections and bridges all in one instance, contrast it to the past where I'd make another track for another scaler for the bridge going back and forth. It's not always fun. It's easier just to go from page one to page two within the same interface. You can also adjust random velocity. So it sounds better when you drag and drop. However, for me, easy keys already does that as soon as you import it. And then also there's a length adjustment and a playback adjustment that you could do, which is very useful, but I don't need to dive into it that deep for now, because this is more about Instacords. So before I get into Instacords, let me get a nice piano progression going. What I want to do is spread these or double them up 
because in the default state, I think they're only like one beat long each. And for this last one, I got to do it twice. And then what I got to do is bring them together, loop it up. This is my procedure. <laughs> I'm gonna use browser MIDI. And I've talked about this in my easy keys review. If you haven't seen it, check it out. And I'm going to use something for jazz, maybe, or maybe something from the seventies, something chorus hooky. Kind of housey, a little too fast for my taste. But remember, Ableton will allow you to adjust that. So I'm going to drag this MIDI to its own track so we can add an instrument to it. I'm going to use Omnisphere for this particular demonstration. And I'll pick a piano or something Rhodes like. Perfect. Let me go ahead and name these tracks real quick. All right, and now the tricky part is we want to accompany that with Instacord. And this is what everyone's been wanting to learn and want to do. They want to create their own art. A lot of people still have questions about it. I definitely understand it doesn't it doesn't take automatically. So the most important thing for me for Easy Chord having a Kai Mini, which is two octaves, is to have my chords and my performance next to each other. So in octave one, I have the chord selector. Octave two, I have the strums and or the single note action. And you can tell what that is at the bottom here. So chords B and picks A, etc. So you'll notice at the bottom of each column, this one right here is on C4. So I make sure I adjust the octave on the Akai Mini to C4. So that first C starts triggering the, and you'll see it at the bottom lighting up green. To help me better internalize it, what I'm not using, I move out the way. I'm not gonna be using all of these chords because my progression only has four. So I only need four slots in chords B, which map here. And then I'm gonna do strums first because I'm gonna add a guitar part to those chords. So this one on the far end, I can move out the way as well. This way, all I have to focus on is the dead center. Now, these are the different strums. That's in my second octave range. And these are the chord selectors. So I go back and forth with one hand or one octave split and play whatever I want if I want to do it live. Me personally, I use overdubbing. It's just cleaner for me. And I'm going to explain all that as I do it. First thing we need to do, do though is get the chords. And this is the thing that Instacord may not necessarily communicate when you look at it or if you're just using it for the first time. It does have presets which show up in the download itself. You have to pick a folder for them so you can always reference them, make them a favorite or something. But it doesn't assume a music theory for you. You choose the theory. You choose the chord progression. So for me, I went from scalar, analyze or loaded something, give it some articulation with easy keys or flipped it even because I can flip it still. And then I come here and I go, all right, well, I got a C minor, a G minor, a D minor, A minor. That's all I got to worry about. I got a C minor nine. So on this list, I'm looking for minor nines. Boom. I got a G minor nine. This maps to my C key now when I select that track again. So this will be a black key, the second one. So I'm going to skip it. I'm going to go to D next, which is this one. So that's going to be the G minor nine. And I'm doing this in order of my progression. So I don't have to worry about jumping around. That's a black key. The next one's a white key, which is E. That's going to be a D minor nine. And then the last one is A minor nine. The next one is a white key as well, F, so A, minor nine. So this whole progression is a minor nine progression. And this sounds smooth, boy. Minor, 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 all minor nines within this jazz progression. And I just use the white keys to walk through them right across here on my Akai Mini. You're not supposed to hear nothing. You're supposed to play it and then strum it up top. But in order to do that, we have to route it to a sound. And that was my second uh, biggest question. What about this program? What about that program? I did do another tutorial called uh, MIDI Tools Explained where I go in depth on how to set that up. I want to run through it again here for Instacord. And Blue Cats does work properly. You have to, if you remember my last video, I was saying how you had to do key ranges. You don't. When you do the MIDI input for your target instrument, just take a, a host listening to host off. Those who know, know what I'm talking about. So Blue Cats works perfect for Akai Machine FL Studio Reason users. It's perfect. There's no funny business, except for the fact if you're a Reason user, you can't get the MIDI, the true MIDI, the new chords that it creates out of it. You have to use Blue Cats to host Instacort in the instrument and keep it as audio or record it as audio. You can't get MIDI out of it, at least not yet in those particular programs. So this MIDI is going to be Omnisphere as well, but it's going to get its notes from Instacord. I should go ahead and name that right away. So MIDI from Instacord. Instacord monitor because we want to listen to this. Now I got to assign Omnisphere to it and pick a jazzy kind of guitar sound so it makes sense in the context of this beat and progression. I'm going to go back into Instacords real quick so you can see what it looks like. Remember, my Akai Mini has two octaves, so I have two Cs. So my first C is going to be a minor ninth or C minor ninth, no relation, no relation to, the to the key I'm pressing. And that's a strum for it. D is another chord, strum for it. E is another chord, strum for it. F's another chord, strum for it. So they want you to play back and forth. 
The easiest way to conduct that though is instead of doing two hands, I just record where the chord should go first as a single track that you don't hear. I'm just recording C, D, E, F to correspond to where these chords should go. And I'm using my piano here as the template for that. Each time this chord changes, that's why I should change the note on Instacord as well. And that's all she wrote. I looped that range. Since this is the chord trigger, I could quantize it as well. So it starts as soon as the chord changes. Now when I play it through, you're gonna see the chords change with the song itself, with no hands. So this gives you freedom to use your second range, which is called pick A, to strum it. Wherever you want, wherever the music speaks to you. The biggest thing I want to do, which is why I got this, is that I want it to sound like a guitar voice. And the guitar voicing just is how the chord is shaped. It's a different order than a piano chord. It's a different texture and everything, and it works good for fake guitar virtual instruments. And that's it. So when you look at the MIDI, it's triggering the chords or the strums, but it's not the actual note or anything. So it's just a control. So I'm gonna call these strums, and this data is only triggering Omnisphere, so there's no clip there. So when you arrange this, you wanna arrange the strums. Now the top strums, which is what created the performance of guitar, I don't have to quantize. They'll fall in line with however you feel it. That's very important. You don't wanna quantize the strums, although you do wanna quantize the chord start times. So that's that. Now, the next thing that most people ask is like, all right, we got that. What about all that funny God mode business? <laughs> <laughs> so let me rename this real quick. I'll call this Guitar IC, just so it's easy to keep track of. Now I'm gonna do God mode. God mode is simply short term for allowing you to create accompanying parts to your chord progression without you having to think about it. Meaning, I can create a baseline to this chord progression because the Instacord note for feature allows me just to hit a single note and play a whole bass line out. It's really smooth. Or melody, counter melody. Some people don't like playing their notes within the chords, so you might have to take those training wheels off if you want more complicated parts. But at the same time, you can make some great music if you kept everything diatonic and not worrying about passing notes. It's completely up to you. Ask the homie Little John. So, so <laughs> let's, uh, let's, Duplicate this, and instead of calling it guitar IC, I'm gonna call it a bass IC. I should recolor it as well, right? I'll make it a different color. I'll make that green. I'll make the actual guitar black, so it goes with guitar IC. I'm gonna take strums off. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna take strums off because I'm gonna do a new bass line. No, I'm tripping. I'm gonna keep the strums at the bottom. I'm sorry, the, the chord triggers at the bottom. I'm gonna reuse the same clip because we're following the base of the same chords. But for this one, I'm gonna call it bass line. And this way the setup is real simple because I duplicate it. I only set it up once. Now, what I gotta do is duplicate Omnisphere, make this one green, I'm gonna call this bass. And then from this drop down menu, make sure I do MIDI from bass IC. So guitar talks to guitar, bass talks to bass. That's why I have this weird color scheme. Now I can record or overdub on this and do my bass line. But first in Omnisphere itself, let's get a bass patch. Boomer square res, it's really loud and obnoxious. Doesn't even fit the flow of this jazz thing but it's a bass and you're gonna hear it through your speakers. Let me save this project real quick. Everything's well. Now, all I gotta worry about is my bass Instacord, I see. And instead of playing these strums on a bass line, let's get them up out of here. Now I wanna focus on these single notes, which I call God mode. Now I don't even adjust my Akai Mini. Now Pix B is on the second octave. And those notes just represent every note that shows up in the shape of this chord. So I could keep it on guitar or I could switch it to basic. In my case, I'm gonna switch it to basic, you know, whatever. The root note's still gonna be the root note. And I wanna change this octave again. So now, when this song plays, I can hit just the C note, which is picks B, and it's gonna hit the bass note. And as it plays, the bass will change. So, with that correct setup, it's a very important that the bass chord trigger is on the dead, beginning. Make sure you clean these up. You don't want them to overlap or to trigger the wrong chord at the wrong time because usually your bass is on a downbeat for the most part. But other than that, I'm fine. I'm lit now. Now I can just go. And I'm just hitting the C key. So 
something real simple. Now on my clip, where I recorded those notes, those are too loud, I can edit those. So on IC, bass is here, but note one is also there. So what I might have to do is, since this is so low, I might need to use note one instead, which is the root of the actual chord as well. Bass is just lower. So to pull that off, what I'm probably going to have to do is move this whole range up a key, if I'm not mistaken. And just like that, you add water. We could do some breaks or some drums, whatever you want to do. And then we'll take my two omnispheres, the guitar, or all three, the EP, the bass, the guitar. I'm gonna group them together. And then you could treat them as one if you want. Might not be smart for bass. I might move this bass out of that group. But I'm gonna treat these as one lo-fi element to show which direction I go with it, which is in a lo-fi realm. Make it sound more organic. My break is throwing the pitch off. There we go. And that's it. That's all you need to do. Of course, you can program real drums and do it for real. But as far as the vibe, finding the what you need as far as chord progression, playing your own guitar part, bass line to follow with one single note press, God mode. You can do your melody that way too, duplicate it again and make a melody track, play the higher range. It's completely up to you. The only thing I'm not feeling about this guitar, again, it's too high. So let me fix that by dropping MIDI down before. put a phaser on this bad boy. That's all she wrote. So that's all of it. That's Scalar, picking out your chord progression, putting something together, demoing your chords, catch a vibe real quick. That's easy keys, adding humanization and performance to chord progressions. You may skip that step if you're using pads or something else. And then of course that's Instachords. Instachords allows us to strum along with it. If you're not using VSC guitars, you might be using VSC harps or uh, polysynths or plucks. That's the same principle. And then again, for the bass line, using single note to follow the chords. It does take a little bit to get to the, the hang of that routine, but trust me, once <laughs> when there's no camera running and you're just in your zone, it, it comes very fast. And in fact, half of these tracks, especially if you're an Ableton user, I can keep intact by grouping Omnisphere and IC together and just drag it into my user library and keep it as a preset. This way I don't have to set it up manually each time. The only thing you would have to still do though is reprogram Instacords, I see what the chords you'll be triggering, but everything else could stay together. Even the clip itself, you can save when you drag and drop it into your user area. So you could trigger off the first four C, D, E, F, keep that clip within your template and just go, especially if you know you're not changing the timing of your chords. And if you are, there's nothing to fold this and go, all right, I made the chord a little bit sooner. Let me just adjust it on the fly real quick. So all of that's up to you. That's the part you have to experiment on and get your own workflow going. I just wanted to show you how cool it was and more importantly, how good it sounds. It's just a different form of expression, that's all. Of course, it's not the real thing. We ain't got it twisted, but it's better than it was yesteryear when I was just drawing these bad boys. But anyway, I'm MG the Future. Thank you for joining me today. Hope you guys have a productive week ahead. Comments, questions, or concerns, definitely let me know in the box below. Until next time, peace.